friends, I'm back with the second video of the video series on class 7 science, motion and time. And this video is all about questions. So we will look at a lot of interesting and conceptual questions from motion and time. Let's get started. Question number one. Classify the following as motion along a straight line, circular or oscillatory motion. So just to remind you, motion in a straight line, that is rectilinear motion. Motion in a circular path, something like this. And oscillatory motion, to and fro motion, like this. The pendulum motion. Motion of your hands while running. So when you run, what happens to your hands? They do not move along a straight path. They just comes forward, goes backward, forward, backward, forward, backward. So it is like a periodic motion. So it is like an oscillatory motion. Motion of a horse pulling a cart on a straight road. Now since the road is straight, so obviously the horse will be pulling the cart also on the straight road, which is going to be a rectilinear motion or straight line motion. So this is going to be straight. Motion of a child in a merry-go-round. So merry-go-round is like moving in circles. So it is circular motion. Motion of a child on a seesaw. What is seesaw? Have you seen this? Uh, you have a pivot in between and this is how it is. So you have a seat here. You have another seat here. So one person seats, sits here. The other person sits here. So wherever the weight is heavy, it goes down. And again, this goes up. When it goes down, this goes up. So that, that's the seesaw. So what kind of motion do you see in a seesaw? So that is again oscillatory motion. So it comes up, comes down, comes up, comes down. So it gets repeated in periodic intervals. Motion of the hammer of an electric bell. So in electric bell, whenever you push the bell, so that hammer, it starts vibrating. So vibration is nothing but again, it is a type of oscillatory motion. So this is oscillatory motion. Motion of a train on a straight bridge. So the, when the bridge is straight, obviously the train is also going to move on the straight path. So it is again a straight line motion. Question number two, which of the following are not correct? The basic unit of time is second. Yes, that is true. Second is the basic unit of time. Every object moves with a constant speed. No, this is false. This is not correct because different objects have different speeds and it is not necessary that the speed will remain the same. That is where comes the concept of non-uniform motion. That is sometimes the object is moving very slowly. Sometimes the object is moving very fast. So basically what's happening? At different intervals of time, the speed is changing. Distances between two cities are measured in kilometers. Yes, that is true because the two cities are quite far apart. So they need a bigger unit of distance and kilometer is a bigger unit of distance. The time period of a given pendulum is not constant. What is time period? It is the time taken to complete one oscillation. So let's say this is the pendulum. This is the mean position. It moves to the extreme position, comes back, passes through the mean position, goes to the other extreme position and comes back. So this is one oscillation and the time taken to complete this one oscillation is called time period. And for any pendulum, the time period will remain constant. So the time period will not change. The time period is only dependent on the length of the pendulum. So when you are talking about a given pendulum, so the length always remains the same because it is the same pendulum we are talking about and therefore the time period also remains constant. So this statement is false. The speed of a train is expressed in meters per hour. The speed is generally expressed either in kilometer per hour or in meter per second. So this statement is also false. Question number three. A simple pendulum takes 32 seconds to complete 20 oscillations. What is the time period of the pendulum? So what is time period? As I said, it is the time taken for one oscillation. So here in the question, we see that for 20 oscillations, it takes 32 seconds. Therefore, for one oscillation, it would take 32 by 20 seconds. 
which would come out to be 1.6 seconds. So therefore 1.6 seconds is the time period of the pendulum. Question number four. The distance between two stations is 240 km. A train takes four hours to cover this distance. Calculate the speed of the train. So these are the two stations and the distance between them is 240 kilometers. So this is point A, this is station B. And the time taken to cover this is four hours. So the speed would be equal to distance traveled divided by time taken. So distance traveled is 240 kilometers and time taken is four hours. So this is going to be 60. So the speed of the train would be 60 kilometers per hour. Question number five. The odometer of a car reads 57321 kilometer when the clock shows the time 8.30 a.m. What is the distance moved by the car if at 8.50 a.m. the odometer reading has changed to 57336 kilometers. So here let's take the help of the distance time graph. So let's say we denote time on the x-axis and distance on the y-axis. So we say that we have noted the reading of the car odometer. What does odometer do? Odometer tells the total distance traveled so far. So when the time was 8.30 a.m., we noted the odometer reading and we noted the odometer reading also at 8.50 a.m. So at 8.30 a.m. the odometer reading was how much? It was 57321 and at 8.50 a.m. it had increased and the value was 57336. So we have to calculate the distance moved by the car from this time to this time. So how much is the time duration? So here it was 8.30, here the time was 8.50. So that means basically the time was 20 minutes. So in these 20 minutes, how much distance was traveled? So the distance traveled was this much distance, correct? So the time period, time for which we are talking about, so that time is 20 minutes. So in 20 minutes, what was the distance covered? So the distance covered was 57336 minus 57321 which is equal to 15 kilometers. So this is the distance moved by the car during this time. Now we also have to calculate the speed of the car in kilometers per minute. So the speed of the car would be equal to distance traveled by time taken. So 15 divided by 20 which is equal to 0 0.75 kilometers per minute. Express the speed in kilometers per hour also. So 1 minute is equal to 1 divided by 60 hours. So this would be 1 by 60 this much kilometer per hour. So it is basically 0 0.75 into 60 kilometer per hour. Salma takes 15 minutes from her house to reach her school on a bicycle. If the bicycle has a speed of 2 meter per second, calculate the distance between her house and the school. So let's say this is her house and this is her school. So we have to find out the distance between the two. So the time taken by her to reach her school is 15 minutes and the speed of her bicycle is 2 meters per second. So the speed is given as 2 meters per second and time taken is given as 15 minutes. So 1 minute is equal to 60 seconds. So 15 into 60 seconds. You can convert it from minutes to seconds. So this is going to be 900 seconds. So now we know that speed is equal to distance by time. So therefore we can say distance is equal to speed into time. So that is equal to 2 into 900 which is equal to 1800 meters or we can write it as 1.8 kilometers. So this is the distance between her house and the school. Question number seven. 
show the shape of the distance time graph for the motion in the following cases a car moving with a constant speed so the speed of the car is constant so the car is moving and the speed is also constant so in distance time graph this is the distance and this is the time so any car moving with a constant speed is nothing but uniform motion and how the graph looks like in uniform motion so this is how the graph would be it would be a straight line so that it covers equal distances in equal intervals of time a car parked on the side of the road parked on the road means no motion the park is not moving at all the, the car is not moving at all it is at rest so in the second case if this is distance and this is time so this is how the plot would be because the distance value of distance would not change with increase in time question number 8 which of the following relations is correct speed is equal to distance into time speed is equal to distance by time speed is equal to time by distance and speed is equal to 1 by distance into time so speed is always distance per unit time so second one is the right option question number 9 the basic unit of speed is kilometer per minute minute meter per minute kilometer per hour meter per second so the basic unit would be meter per second that's because as i have mentioned before that speed is distance per unit time and the si unit for distance is meter and the si unit for time is second so therefore the basic unit for speed would be meter per second question number 10 a car moves with a speed of 40 kilometers per hour for 15 minutes and then with a speed of 60 kilometers per hour for the next 15 minutes so the total distance covered by the car is so here as per this question it says that for the first 15 minutes so the first 15 minutes the car moves with a speed of 40 kilometers per hour the next 15 minutes it moves with a speed of 60 kilometers per hour so we have to find out the total distance so let's say that for the first 15 minutes the distance traveled is d1 for the next 15 minutes the distance traveled is d2 so we have to find out d1 and d2 and then we can add them together to find out the total distance so what would be d1 so distance will be equal to speed into time So what is the speed speed is 40 km per hour and time is 15 minutes so we will convert this also into hours so 15 by 60 so this would be 4 so this is equal to 10 km similarly let's find out d2 which will be equal to speed into time speed is 60 km per hour and time is again 15 minutes which is 15 by 60 so this would be 4 so this would be again 15 km so d1 and d2 are 10 and 15 km therefore the total distance would be equal to d1 plus d2 which is equal to 10 plus 15 that is 25 km so 25 km would be the right answer question number 11 The figure shows the distance time graph for the motion of two vehicles A and B. Which one of them is moving faster? Now how do we get to know the speed of a vehicle from the distance time graph? The slope tells us the speed. Slope steeper the slope greater the speed. So if you compare the slope of A and B, the slope of A is more than the slope of B. So you just consider any point. So let's say you just consider this point you draw a straight line on the x axis so this line crosses through this point on a and this point on b so for this point what would be the speed at this point let's say this is p1 and this is p2 so for p1 what would be the speed at p1 so speed at p1 let's calculate speed at point p1 so speed at point p1 would be equal to distance traveled by time taken so let's say this is t and let's say this is d let's say this is t1 and this is d1 so this would be equal to distance traveled that is d1 by t1 now similarly let us try to calculate speed at p2 that is this point so this would be equal to this much distance so this distance is let's say d2 
So this will be equal to D2 by T1 because time remains the same. Now if you compare D1 and D2, looking at this picture you can see that D1 is greater than D2, correct? Therefore speed at P1 is greater than speed at P2. So that means if you compare any two corresponding points on A and B, the speed for the point which is lying on A will always be more. That means the vehicle A is moving faster. So A is faster than B. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson on motion and I hope that this lesson would have helped you. So see you all in the next lesson. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any feedback, do let us know in the comment section, share the video with your friends and we will come up with a new video with a new topic very soon. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.